Hello Whistlers everywhere. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, so today's uh, tutorial video I am going to talk a little bit about metronomes and the best way we, that we can use them in our practice. Um, so to begin with, um, metronomes are well, come in many different shapes and sizes and um, you can even get them now on your smartphones, which is what I'm going to use today. Um, the metronome on my smartphone is one called Tempo, uh, and it's an app which comes from a company called Frozen Ape. Uh, now, I like this one because it's quite versatile. There is a free version, uh, but I got the, uh, I think it was £2.99 um, for this version, which is a lot more useful in terms of I can um, adapt it to whatever I need it to do. Um, I can play in odd time signatures or I can um, break it down rather than counting in whole not heart, quarter notes or eighth notes, I can count in sixteenth notes. Um, but probably for most of you, um, you would only need the basic version. Um, you can use a mechanical metronome and there's nothing wrong with using one of those. Um, so really what you want is something that will keep you in time and give you a steady pulse. Um, so first off, uh, using a metronome in your practice is an important part of your practice. Um, so if you start off learning a tune, when you're first learning a tune, um, obviously when you're learning the basics of how the tune goes about the ornamentation and all that stuff, um, it's important to get the basics right before you start then putting it to a metronome or working with a, with a metronome uh, to help you get a consistent rhythm. Um, so consistency and consistent rhythm is the key to working with a metronome. What you don't want to do is to uh, learn a piece of music and the easy bits you can play at full speed and then have to slow down for the bits which you're stumbling on. Um, it's best to work consistently and even the bits which you know you can play easily is better than to play them slowly and consistently with all the piece going all the way through so yeah don't speed up and slow down keep it consistent and so once you've learned the basic tune how it's going to go yeah the next stage then is to maybe work with a metronome uh, set at a sensible and when I say sensible, you don't want to set it too quickly or too slowly. Um, so uh, when you're setting your metronome, um, just to bear in mind a few things, uh, because when we count, uh, and I'm going to use a reel as an example here, uh, what we want to be able to do is to count where you would tap or naturally tap your foot. So even though reels are written in four, um, which is also known as common time. We tend to count them in what's known as cut common time. Now cut common time, rather than counting in 4-4, four, four, we count it in 2-2, two, two, which adds up to the same uh, amount of beats in the bar, but it's just where the emphasis goes. So on a real, rather than counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, we'll count 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, three, four. So where we tap our foot on the first and the third beat. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, you can set your metronome to count in four, four uh, and count on each crotchet or each quarter note beat. Um, but you may find that a little bit off-putting. So certainly uh, reels you tend to count in cut common time, in two, two time. With jigs and slip jigs, um, with it being compound time, we tend to count jigs in two dotted quarter notes. So um, rather than counting one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll count in two groups of three. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, it's where you would naturally want to tap your foot. Um, same with slip jigs, rather than counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We would count in groups of three, so it'd be three groups of three, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So setting your metronome is important um, because you don't want it to become something which is going to be a distraction for you. Uh, so if you're listening to each eighth note beat in six, eight, and nine, eight, it may well become a bit of a distraction. So again, yeah, set your metronome to where you would normally tap your foot. It's an important thing to do that. Uh, and again, you don't want the metronome to become a distraction. So I've set my metronome. I don't know if you can see that there. Probably not, but it's set to two, two time. And I've set it to 60 beats, uh, 60 half note beats um, a minute. And so if I'm going to look at uh, playing a reel, I'm going to set mine to, as I said, 60. And first of all, I'm just going to have a listen to what that sounds like. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to start playing, first of all, without the metronome. So just to get the first part of Sean Reed's. metronome to something like that which is round about 60 <clears throat> so now I'm going to play the first part of Sean Reed's with the click set at 60 yourself going out of time with the metronome then simply stop and wait for the next cycle the good thing with these metronomes uh, and the ones you can get as apps on your phone uh, and some of the electronic ones they emphasize the first beat so the first click is the first beat in the bar so if you know if you listen to this again So the high click is the first beat in the bar and the second click is uh, the second and third beats in the bar. So one, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's useful because it can tell you when you go out of time where to pick up again in the, in, in the next bar. So having that facility on your metronome is, is a useful function. So if we have a look again, at Sean Reed's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow it down even more. So that was set at 60. Now I'm gonna do uh, the same thing at 50, but I'm going to then use uh, the metronome. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop certain sections because this is an important thing you can do when you're practicing, especially with ornamentation. If you practice it slowly and rhythmically, when you speed up, yeah, it shouldn't become sloppy. So I'm going to take it down to 50, which is really slow. So at first of all, I played the first part at half time and then I played it in full time. So I just halved the beat to make sure that my cut and tap on that short roll were in time. So again. Now 
I'm going to do it at full speed. And so now what I can do is I can add the next bit. And again, I'm going to do it in half time and then in full time. So. By doing it half speed and full speed you can hear that the clarity should be the same in both so half time make sure the beats are correct and when you double the time to the full speed then you make sure that the clarity isn't obscured in any way and it's a useful thing to do with any piece of music is to do the half time and then the full time kind of practice uh, because it shows you where you're going wrong in terms of your rhythm and especially with the rhythm of the ornamentation uh, it's important to get that absolutely spot on so um, what I can do now is I can play the whole first part uh, or first phrase um, in half time and then I'm going to play it at full time now I've set this as I said to 50 uh, which is plenty fast enough whilst you're sort of learning the piece so one two, three, four, one, two, three, half time. Now full speed. One, two, three. Again, if you to lose the beat, just stop. One of the things that I uh, sometimes say to people is <clears throat> if you're practicing with a metronome, it's no good having the metronome doing its thing and you doing your thing and you're not listening to the metronome. Obviously, the metronome isn't going to listen to you. Um, so if you hear yourself going out of time, stop and then pick up again. Uh, you don't have to pick up at the beginning of the, of the bar, or sorry, the beginning of the piece. You can pick up the beginning of the next bar or the phrase. But when you're putting it all together, yeah, you want to work in phrases rather than think about the whole piece. Right, so now I've got the basics. I'm going to take it up by 10. So going from 50 to 60. Um, you can take it up by smaller increments. Um, but um, by taking it up by 10, I wouldn't take it up by more than 10. Um, because the jump would be a little bit too much. Um, so 50 to 60 is a reasonable amount to take it up to. As you're getting faster, more up to the actual sort of the correct speed for a reel, I would take it up in smaller increments. So maybe take it up, up in increments of five beats a minute rather than 10, but from 50 to 60, I've always found it fine. So now 60. So we can do the same thing.
half speed, you will need to breathe more frequently. And depending on the whistle you've got, this is a, a Simon Weston um, boxwood whistle. Uh, and it does tend to take a little bit more breath than some of the other whistles I have. So, uh, but at half speed, you're going to need to breathe more than when you play it at the full tempo. So, um, so that was half speed. This is full speed at 60. One, two, Just stop. I'll show you what I mean by that. So, again, if I'm doing it full speed and I got a tempo. Wait for it to come back. Now you can hear there I've hopelessly lost the tempo. So I stop and come back. Your metronome clicks have to be the main focus of what you're playing. Again, if I've lost it, stop, come back again. Okay, so now at 60, I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to move it up to 70. Uh, which is plenty fast enough for where we need to be at the moment. So again, I'm going to do the half speed, full speed thing. speed the rhythm is the same the cleanliness of the ornaments are the same uh, the only thing is you're playing it at twice the speed so uh, another good thing to do is to record your practice and listen to the cleanliness of your ornamentation listen to the tempo listen to the speed and listen to how it sounds from half time to full time and have a listen so if your full time is sloppy if it's you're losing the tempo a lot then your full time is too quick so then slow it back down again using a metronome as I like to call it the great revealer because it shows you exactly where you're going wrong in your counting and in your rhythm playing and rhythm playing is the most fundamental basics to be able to play uh, any music with a tempo. If you can't play in time, then really all you're playing is a collection of notes uh, in a rather random way. Tempo is fundamentally important. So practice is useful and practice with a metronome is useful in terms of helping you to keep a steady tempo and reminding you to keep a steady tempo. Uh, so what I like to do as well then is maybe just play a little bit without the metronome and then put the metronome on and see how that sounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, have a listen first, one. So this is set at 70, at 2-2 two, two time, cut common. 
So I'm going to try that. So with the metronome. So one of the tendencies when you're playing without a metronome is pretty much everybody tends to speed up slightly, um, which is fair enough as you're playing a living, breathing, organic piece of music. Uh, a little bit of speeding up is, is, is probably inevitable, uh, but ultimately what we want to try and do is to keep a steady tempo. Um, and by doing this, working with a metronome, you're encouraging your own internal timekeeper your own method of keeping time internally um tapping your foot's great if you can do it in time unfortunately i know a lot of musicians who tap the foot and it isn't particularly in time um so yeah it's a good idea to practice with the metronome and yeah practice tapping your foot with the metronome as well so here we go at 70 again one two one two one two one um, the other thing you may want to think about uh, when you're setting your metronome is to think about the speed which you initially want to start off with. Uh, now, I mentioned a little bit uh, at the beginning that you don't want to start off too quickly and you don't want to start off too slowly. Um, so if you think about the full speed of a reel or a jig, yeah, what I would do is if I'm working on my rhythm counting, I would maybe look at about 60% to start with. Half time, full time, that's a useful way of practicing. Um, then maybe go up by 10%. And then as you get into the full speed, again, you maybe want to go up in an increment of five. Now this is at 70. So if I want to take it up to 80, you can hear we're sounding much more at the speed of a full, uh, the full speed of a reel. Here we go. If you want to check against this, you can go back to the half time. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the full speed. One, two, three. Again, if at any time you're going out of tempo at full speed, stop and then pick it up again when the metronome hits that first beat. Um, so just again, a word of warning with metronomes, use them as a tool, use them as uh, to enhance your rhythm and playing and practice, 
but don't become overly dependent on them because again what we're doing is we're trying to encourage your own internal sense of rhythm and pulse um, the other thing you can do again if you find a metronome is really intrusive and you just simply can't work with one there are some resources available on YouTube uh, there is a bower on metronome so basically rather than listening to uh, monotonous clicks uh, it plays a metronome kind of starts off and plays a jig rhythm or a real rhythm or a polka rhythm or a slip jig rhythm for you to follow and I know they do them at different speeds as well so you may find that a little bit more um, helpful in terms of feeling comfortable with playing with a rhythm instrument um, however they aren't as flexible as using uh, an app a metronome app on your iPhone or even an actual metronome um, but again it's a little bit different um, you can maybe use one of those Bauron uh, YouTube videos to help you with your rhythm as well okay that's about it uh, if you've got any questions um, again you can uh, leave a comment in the comments bit below or you can email me anything you want to know about whistling or rhythm playing um, it's ben at benwalker.org uh, or you can find me on Facebook on Ben Walker Music um, and again yeah if you found this video helpful at all if you would like to uh, subscribe to the whistleblowers channel um, and maybe like and if you want to leave a comment that would be fantastic okay folks uh, I shall see you shortly for another tutorial video uh, take care and goodbye for now